So, um, so you received a call, I guess, from Reggie, I believe I it was. The, I got the call about, I, I was doing bits and pieces for yeah, Reggie at the time. Right. Um, I started off just visiting him and I, now I'm running a whole army in the London nightclub world. And so I was handy to know for him and it was handy for me to be associated with them. You right. know what I mean? I didn't actually think about the entertainment world or what it was gonna, how it was going to hinder me being linked to them. I'm looking at the dormant world and how it was opening doors for me being linked to them. When in reality, there was nothing they could do for me apart from me go, I know them. There was nothing they could do for me. If they weren't anything done, they asked me to do it for them. Right. There was fuck all they could do for me. By the time I met them, they'd already been in prison for 25 years. Yeah. That was 70 odd, you know what I mean? Little. So there was nothing they could do for me Absolutely. other than me say I know them. So that the balance of power had turned round. It was handy for them to know me. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and when English and Son, Ronnie Craig was put in the funeral parlour, they got, they, you know, and I'm not allowed to tell you a lie here. Yeah? If I tell you any fibs here, yeah, I get shot. Right. I'm talking about real people here. I'm not Definitely. doing a movie star thing or a pop star thing for or sure. a footballer thing. I'm talking about things. And English and Son were um, informed that not everyone's a Kratering fan and they're going to come and desecrate the desecrate the body, uh, set light to the thing, and they didn't know what to do, so they got in touch with Reggie Cray at Mason Prison. Reggie Cray then was allowed to phone call and rung me and went, you've got to go down there and do the security for the, have someone stay in the English and Sunday in the night time. Right, right. Well, trying to find two or three men to come and spend the night with me with Ronnie Cray's body, that was harder <laughs> than to find the 200 geezers to turn up on the day and do the security. Because the ghost is scary enough, but the ghost of Ronnie Cray, wow. Well, you know, yeah, that's insane. That was, that was quite hard. So then, once I was there living in there for, for the two weeks, I then realised the um, growth of what this funeral was going to do. You know, the, the amount of press it was gaining, it was sort of rolling into the biggest funeral since Winston Churchill and Lady Di, you know, there's three quarters of a million people Definitely, turned up. Definitely, for sure, for sure. You know, so then we had meetings with the Chief of Police and, uh, you know, so I ended up doing the security in, in there, sleeping in there with him, and the security for the funeral, uh, which meant the security for the church, the security for the actual hole in the ground, the security for, because Reggie had to get out of a car and walk into see Ronnie in the chapel arrest and then get, leave there and go and get back in the car and then get out of the car, go into the church and then get back in the car and then get out of the car and go to the, the hole in the ground. Oh, so there was all chances of something might happen. Definitely. So you had to um, run that like you was looking after the fucking president. You 100%. understand what I mean? You what it sounds to, like, yeah. You know, and every single walking gangster in the world was there, the Frankie Frasers and everyone else who wanted to see one of the Cray Twins. If you if they had if you was, if you had a pop star that was your idol, you could go to Wembley and watch Michael Jackson or Madonna. But if you had a Reggie Cray or Ronnie Cray, you know, were your idols, they were locked up for thirty years. You never ever was going to see them. So to go to that funeral, you were seeing the Nashes, Freddie Foreman, Frankie Fraser, Charlie Cray, Reggie Cray, Lambriano twins. You know, you were seeing all these mythical. Yeah. Um, people yeah. right so you're looking after them you know that was a job and half and because i took that job on board very very seriously there was cnn and all that flying around you know when, <laughs> yeah. when if Jotty had, john Gotti had died the whole world looked at his funeral and i made sure that the whole world looking at the british monarch's funeral saw something so i gave them a show right <laughs> that's what i'm like i can't help it i gave them something in america to look at yeah, I'll show you a bit of security. I'll show you what bad boys we got. They're not all like Sicilian mafia things. Look at what we got. That's what I mean. Yeah, I had the yardies and I had the, I had, I had, every, I had everyone involved in yeah. my thing. Yeah. Right. And, and when they all met here in the morning, there was two hundred or one hundred and fifty people met outside here when they were all black suited up. I've got to be honest. Like, instant hard on material. You're a man. <laughs> right? You're a testosterone. <laughs> I looked at that lot and I wanted to fucking invade your rat. Let alone fucking die. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I could have sorted out this Russian problem. Like, whatever, you know, you know what I mean? It, yeah. like, it was um, sexual, right? Yeah, different you know, drive, However yeah. dippy that makes me sound, <laughs> I'm telling you what I felt having been in charge of that. No. Like driving over there in a big snake thing of, 
150, Convoy, isn't yeah, it? Wow, yeah. man, stop it. <laughs> if you had shot me, they would have bounced off. And that's what it felt like. Incredible. Uh, at the time when I took it, I made sure it was a spectacle. And whatever they was looking at around the rest of the world when the monarch of the British crime world died, I made sure that it looked like that. And you did. I paid for it dearly it. afterwards <laughs> because it made all the authorities, yeah. the police, go to every club that I ever worked and went, if you employ Dave Courtney as a doorman, you won't have a license for a fucking television. Wow. Right, so sack him. You're now, they're changing the law. It's now law that you cannot glamorise crime. So Virgin, who published nine of my books, went, we can actually publish your book, but I'm not allowed to put a poster up going, Dave's got a new book out because the poster is glamorising crime. You can't be in a, in a in a magazine or on a radio station or in a film because that's glamorising a real criminal. Really? Vinnie Jones can play you. Vinnie Jones played me in yeah, Lockstock, yeah? yeah. But, and they were real stories. The two, doing the geezer on the sunbed, the two shotguns. Well, the car thing as well with the tie. With, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's all real true stories. <laughs> that were, you know, were buzzing around the West End when I was a doorman. Yeah. And Guy Ritchie heard all that and he copied his whole film genre from the Dave Courtney thing, which was black guys and white guys in fancy suits, because we were doormen, keeping crime palatable to the general public, because we kept it funny. <laughs> yeah? And he made his whole film career out of that. Good luck to him, he actually put me in Lockstock yeah. as um, Bricktop. But then halfway through, the people with the money involved, like, no, look, we're trying to put him in prison, you're trying to get him on Richard and Julie, and you know, so... Wow. So yeah. you can't do it. So he had to come round here again and then go, sorry, Dave, we can't be in the film. Then he made Snatch and had done the audition for Snatch in my back garden. Crazy. Where there was all the photographs of. Crazy. And he picked all of my friends to be the gangsters in Snatch because he'd seen and found out I'll use real ones, right? Then he still couldn't say thank you to me because that's glamorising crime. So I made my own film, Hell to Pay. And everyone in it is real. The gangsters are gangsters. The prostitute's a prostitute. The doorman is a doorman. Right. The cab driver's a cab driver. It's my car, my gun, my house, my wife. Yeah? And we all made a film. So no one needed to be actors. Everyone went, oh, you're all such good actors. We're not acting. <laughs> that is an awe. I'm playing Dave. <laughs> yeah? You're playing, a, you're playing a man that does filming. You yeah, know what I mean? We yeah. all got it right. Yeah. And you look good. We took it to Cannes. It won Best of Group. Yeah. Cans, and as soon as you come back to England, they went, ban it. That's glamorising crime. Oh, really? So they changed the actual law that you can't glamorise crime now. Mm. Yeah? And all my friends that were the journalists that have been writing about me for years and years and years, they know me. They come to my parties, I know them. Yeah. And then they're going, we're not allowed to do that. If you bring another book out, don't give it to me to be a book critic, because I'm not allowed to say... It's funny or it's good because that's glamorising crime. That's so, insane. Right, but it's real. Go and check yeah, it up. Yeah. Google it. Right? <laughs> you know, they destroyed you. That's insane, honestly. Well, destroyed me. Yeah. You, you're doing all right, sir. I'm trying anyway. You know what I mean? Uh, Mr. Cooley, so basically, um, you know, you, you, you're you a best selling author as well. Number one. Number one, yeah. Still the want to get off. Got to, you know, you've got to give it, got, you got to give it your props. You can't see it, but I'm holding my cock while I'm saying that. Number one best seller. Sure. So I guess you were coming back from a book signing and uh, you was in a stretch Mercedes right. with the missus, right? And, uh, you know, to say the least, you was getting a bit oh, frisky. I, 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 yeah, yeah go for I it. Know, I know the bit you're looking <laughs> yeah. for. Uh, we was coming back from Liverpool. Right. And it was, it was the one where the bent copper had got involved. Yeah. yeah. And it was, the, it was the copper that was arrested. He was the one being followed, not me, because for being a bent copper. And all of a sudden they found him, filmed him, talking to me. Right. So when they caught him, they, they went, you're a bank copper. And he went, no, 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 um, Dave's working for me. Yeah, That's flipped it, yeah. Yeah, flipped it. But the, the actual arrest was, on the way home, it was a stretch Mercedes, the driver was called Ebo. <laughs> okay. I was naked, my wife was naked, yeah. She was sitting straddling me, looking out the back window. I was having a shag, I was buzzing around life at the time. Like, you know, <laughs> constant hard on you. Know, <laughs> I was 25, but 30 years younger. Right. And as we were going down the road, she went, it looks like there's a load of football hooligans following us. Like, but there were cars full of old Bill. And then all of a sudden, the lights come on me from the helicopter. All the police jumped out like that and, and surrounded us and all this. And I'm trying to get dressed and all that. And they've all got the guns. Going, get out of the car, get out of the car. 
And as I'm rooting around the floor to try and get my trousers, they thought I was trying to get home. They go, I'm going to show you, going to show you. So I had to open the door with fuck all nuff bollock naked. <laughs> right? Bollock naked, so is you. And I went, I said, and he's all down his docking tape. Yeah. Uses. As you can see, all I have on is a heart. <laughs> Stop. Stop it! <laughs> Tell me that ain't funny. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, that is the truth girl. is, this is my biggest naughty gangster moment. I went to court with a copper, with a bank copper. I actually got found not guilty. Absolutely. And the copper got five years. Absolutely. That is sexy. <laughs> right? That got me brought over to Sicily by the mafia who invited me over to go and talk to the in, in Palermo. Me and twenty five. Um, and mafia blokes with five yeah. interpreters they wanted to know and, 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 and during that court case they was trying to make it look like I was a, an informant yeah. right? because I was running for mayor Dave Courtney was getting all this <laughs> hero worship <laughs> even all the television programs and they were just trying to make it bad for me they went there might be you know we're gonna, the alleged informant and all this and if you want to leave the court case if you want to leave the court coming out the back under a towel you can I thought you cheeky bastard. I thought, right, well, for that, I'm going to make a spectacle. So <laughs> I was dressed up as a court jester and brought 40 or 50 of my mates with me in black suits and went into the court. And when I'd said to them when they arrested me, if you put me within arm's reach of the man that's calling me a grass, who's actually my co-defendant, right. I will bang him out. Yeah, if And I promise you, I, I will do that. But what he's saying... He's actually going to get me shot if it's believed. And because I know the end result is going to be not guilty. Yeah. yeah. You know, if I'm a class, he's got to get a bit of paper with someone saying who. 100%. Yeah, that's you how it mean? works. And, yeah. and, and the case was nothing to do with me, this thing. Yeah. And um, they believed it because it went to court about three times and they put me on in the morning and him on in the afternoon. So they did believe it. But this day I turned up to get caught as the court jester with all my <laughs> mates. I went in, they were just bringing him out of court and I thought, I'm never going to get another chance, right? <laughs> so I banged him and I promise you, he's a <laughs> fucking beautiful right? He's out cold in Bow Street Magistrates. It's all on television, it's all on film. He's out cold, I'm in a court jester's outfit. Police are coming along, yeah. grab me and all that, blah, blah, blah. Crazy. Uh, yeah, and um, what was really funny is, while he's actually unconscious, two coppers went to pick him up under the arm. So they've got one under this arm, one under that arm, and they're bringing him over there to sit him on the chair. <laughs> and my wife has just come in, and she's, she's, a, she's feistier than me. Yeah. And, she, and as she sees me being dragged off, and him being put on the chair, and because his arms, he can't move, she's run up to him, and he can't get out of the way, because the coppers <laughs> are facing that way, and go and like, put a proper little combination on him. <laughs> Boom, watch him up. Watch him. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So, and did he see you coming for when he was coming in? And no, no, no. Over? He was just coming out of the court yeah. and I was going in. Yeah. It was only for police and directions. I right. did, you know, and, and they did believe that I was going to hit him if I ever see him. Yeah. They did believe it yeah. because I had bugged him. I bugged him when we met. That's He's a saying fact. that I had talked about something else. That's a fact. I had actually bugged him. The police had the tape. They knew that it was nothing to do with me. They were just doing this to fucking hurt me. Absolutely. Yeah, do a little bit of, you know, they already had the tape. They're mm. on the very first, so I got away with smacking him in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Because it was their fault for security. They'd kept him separate for the other two court cases. <laughs> yeah. So it's your fault for that, you know. 100%. That's my sexist moment. <laughs> I, went to, I went to Sicily and they went, there's an unwritten rule book, Mr. Courtney. And because they speak in pidgin English, like, very Tony Montana. Right. He's telling me. <laughs> there is an unwritten rule. I don't know what I was talking about. I wasn't doing it. Anyway. <laughs> no, that was amazing. That the was unwritten rule good. book is when you go to court, you do not bring all your friends. You wear a nice suit and it's yes sir, no sir. And a letter from someone that's known you 20 years saying you're a nice guy. They're the rules of going to court all around the world and everyone abides to them. The only one that don't are the Cosa Nostra. Right. Because they already know he's John Gotti. It's not worth him coming in that nicely. <laughs> we have nothing. Yeah, so he goes to the court and turns up to court gangster. Right. Yeah, the only person we've ever seen do that before, since is you. So before you got sentenced, you went to court dressed like that with all your mates and banged the copper out. <laughs> Fucking tell me about that day. <laughs> tell me about that day. I'll give you five grand to send you home. And Virgin Publishing got me the job. Incredible. Yeah, so I'll, I'm now talking to all these Sicilian naughty men 
in the crowd, which I didn't know at the time, was um, the one that ended up being the Prime Minister, uh, Berlusconi. Yeah, Berlusconi. Uh, yeah. Berlusconi. So he's heard this story. He's heard this story. <laughs> Loved this little story, yeah. <laughs> so when he ended up being Prime Minister, the only English book uh, in the crime, ch in, in, in any Italian bookshop, the crime... Um, Department. Right. It's the smallest crime department in, uh, in the world because they are used to and, ha and have got the mafia living there. So they're not interested in no yeah. Yardy story, no <laughs> Ronnie Biggs, no Cray Twins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they live with the fucking mafia. <laughs> and there is no one else's book of any other country in there. But mine, because he'd met this Dave Courtney bloke and told him about all of this, you know, and it, it, that what happened. Mm -hmm. And the Gambinos round about the same time as Snatch was being made, got in touch with Freddie Foreman and went, the kids are coming over here on the their school semester, they come and travel all around Europe. Right. And they wanted to come to London, could he get them into the ministry? So Fred, for Freddie Foreman rings me and goes, you know, can you do that? I'm fucking 70 or not. I said, of course I'll fucking do that. Can they come to the house first? I went, yeah, yeah. So there's about five kids, about 18, they will come to this house first. And I'm having a laugh and we're having a joke. They're looking at all this, they're having a thing, took them to the Ministry of Sound where I had the doorman. Right. They had the best night of their fucking life, <laughs> let me tell you. Gone back to America and just gone, don't quote, don't quote, don't quote, don't quote, don't quote, right? You know, so that's happened. The Bernasconi's doing the don't quote, don't quote, don't quote, and the Jay Z's put me on the front of his album. That's insane. Doing the don't quote, don't quote, don't quote, yeah. right? So all that was happening, and I didn't actually know. That's why Jay Z put me on the album because all that talk out there. Right, came from the, the, the right. mob guys, basically. So then I yeah. goes, I goes out there to Miami. I goes to um, New York. Right. On a little tour, doing a stand up talking and all that. So Jay Z's club's just there. So I'm sat there, everyone. Come, we've got to do this. We've got to do this. And when I landed in America, right. the Gambino people come and pick me up from the airport. Like, we're back telling me. This is a fuck up bit. Right. Without telling me. So when they turned up, these looked like they walked out of a fucking film. Grease back there, lump in pocket, mm. big black car outside. Right. I'm afraid we're going to separate you from your company, Mr. Cotney. <laughs> We've got some people you need to meet. Now, I think they're going to kill me. <laughs> yeah? So I was ready to start going, help me! Help! <laughs> help! Don't even know. I'm ready for that. I hear me. I'm not doing a gangster thing. I'm ready. Sure. And my other mates that were with me are going, off you go, Dave, you're on your own, see you later. And I'm like, fuck, I'm <laughs> shitting myself. <laughs> shitting myself. And they're taking me round the fucking, round all these Italian -y restaurant people. And I'm meeting all these old blokes that are stinking the tomatoes. <laughs> I've, all their kids have come back going, Dave Courtney, Dave Courtney, Dave Courtney, that. Um, Bernasconi's going, Dave Courtney, this, Dave Courtney, that. You know, uh, Jay Z's put me on the thing. So I just had a nice day meeting all these people, looking at black and white pictures of no one I knew, couldn't understand. Got back to the hotel and they, um, we're going to Jay Z's club that night. Right. So the Gambino said, well, if you're going there, we'll leave the limo outside and we'll take you as a lift. Oh, cool. So then we go <laughs> upstairs, there's a change. And what we didn't know is they're known out there, like, known. Right. Like, like if Dave Beckham dropped you off in a minicab, look, you know what I mean? I'm <laughs> like, fuck me, that's Dave Beckham. So we go to Jay Z's club. There's a big load of queue going that way and big queue that way. And there's doormen out there that, I don't know where how he, how he didn't split his mum in half coming out. Yeah, but they're like 35 <laughs> stone, seven foot three. And what the fuck are they? These people are just absolutely mental sizes you know with I mean? a piece, you know, like, Crazy. what the fuck and all that. Anyway, so we've just walked, they've run up first and come down. And then as we've got to walk up there, they're going, come in, come in, come in, come in. I, you know, we were ready to queue up and pay. We were, we didn't, you know. And what I heard him with my own ears go, they were going, who's that, who's that, who's that? He went, I don't give a fuck, I don't know who the fuck that is, but if he's got the Gambinos dropping off and dropping him off as his, as his cab, he's fucking not paying. You know what I mean? <laughs> if he's got the Gambinos dropping him here as, as his cab, he said he can fucking come in. I was like, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I nearly come. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, man, that just everything's crazy. falling into place. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. And the same as the Francesi thing, you know. I mean, all yeah, of that. Yeah. You know, him coming here, coming round here for breakfast. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah, to get yeah. me up on stage with him to do the talk. Amazing. He's yeah. going to be doing little chats with me on the interviews. 
when I go to America if they allow me to have my sweet yeah no big up Michael Francis definitely yeah yeah, man. yeah for sure you know? great man yeah literally.